Hi, welcome to the data deck. So I just have a requirement that I have a Spark code and I have to prepare a Spark submit. So where I have to give number of executors, cores, memory overhead, driver memory and etc. So every time when I want to do this calculation, I have to say like, okay, number of memory I do have, number of cores I need to put. So I have to do all these calculations every time, right? So instead, I'm just planning to build a component uh, a web application. So either myself or my teammates can use it so that they, it makes the work so simple. Come, let's do. Okay, now let's go to build a Spark memory calculator. And before we get into this, right? Uh, so we are the not one who building this first. So if you just go to Google and just search for Spark memory calculator, you can see there is already so many people have already developed it. So now you may get a question. So then what is the reason of doing it? So, okay, the first one. So by developing this, you can able to understand the formula of each memory properties that we give, right? So many people still used to get confused, like what is uh, the formula for uh, memory calculator, like number of executors, cores, memory over overhead, parallelism, shuffle parallelism. So still, this is one of the leading question asked in interview and people are not able to answer it. So we do have dynamic resource allocation. You may think that can help, right? But it's not like most of the case we used to enable this DRA, dynamic resource allocation, and, and only few environments, uh, like similar to uh, when I say environments, like you use Dataproc or EMR or Databricks or Snowflake or any uh, big data service provider, cloud service, right? So only few of them are giving, um, like they are taking care of managing such properties, but not everybody, right? So the first thing, it's for your learning. And the second thing, why we develop such thing, you can able to configure it. If you use someone else calculator, that is not possible. But when you, when I say configure, it's your formula configuration. So you can just build it for your company and your internal employees can use it. And if there is a configuration change required that you can override it, you can change the formula. Okay. So now I'm just showing you this right side window, which is the basic web UI, which I have built. I just use Python and HTML. And then I use Flask framework, which is actually the web server. It has its own web server and Flask is a framework which used to develop web applications. So you need a web server to deploy your HTML page, right? So Flask has it by internally. Fine. So now I just have one HTML page, uh, which is called index.html. So this is going to be your main page. So main page is something what you are seeing in the right hand side. So it has all the labels and text boxes. And when, when I click calculate, so I'll be getting the output. So when I click calculate, it takes me to another page, which is the result page. So I have another HTML page called result.html. And in here, I'm just printing the output. And if you are using PyCharm, you have to use, you have to create a table, uh, sorry, you have to create a folder templates and all HTML files should reside inside the template folder only. Now, let me show you my Python code. So what I have, what I have done here is I just used REST API. So that means that you use HTTP methods like post and get to develop it. So that's what I have done. So we are not going to deep into that, but the code is there. The GitHub link is there. You can use the code, but I'm just telling you, I used uh, REST API, I use HTTP methods. So app.route, so slash, what does that mean? So when I give my website, right? So for example, you created a domain and, and then you just hosted this uh, application, right? So for example, www.gautam.com. So that is something, the slash, so the landing page, so the main page. So when they type the website, they ha it has to be get redirected to the router to index.html. So in my case, I just executed this code. You can see here in the console, it is just deployed it in my local host with a port number. So that is going to be my website. Consider this is my domain. So 127.0.0.1 and 5000 is my domain. Okay, so when I, when I give just this and that is equal to the slash. And when I click this calculate button, right, it takes me to another page. You can just see in the URL. See, when I click calculate, it just gives me slash calculate. So that you can see in the next app.route calculate. Right. In the index page also, you can see in index.html. When they click submit, right, it has to take me to calculate page. So which I have given here in the form action, the beginning I have given. So that means whatever logic I've written within this calculate function will be get executed. Okay, let's see what we have written in the calculate method. So these are all the uh, inputs which I got from the user. And with this, what I'm going to do is I'm just performing the calculation, right? So you can see total number of cores. Uh, the formula is number of nodes into cores per node. Okay, so in my case, total number of cores is 75. 
But the thing is, in the previous page, you can see I have given 16 cores per node and total number of nodes is 5. That means it should be 80. But I'm just minusing 5, which is like you can see here, minus number of nodes, 5. So what I'm doing is the total number of available core is going to be 75 from 80 because I'm just giving 5 cores to my resource manager. And then total memory overhead. So memory overhead is a property that is I'm just giving it to the JVM. So 10%, uh, it's a default value, 10% of your each executor memory goes to the JVM. So the JVM has to do certain tasks like garbage collections and many more. So executor is where your task will be get executed. So how the calculation happens here, whatever the value I give here, it's percentage. You can see here, I just mentioned it as percentage. So that means 10 divided by 100 into RAM size and that into number of node. So that much value, which I'm going to assign it for memory overhead. So I'll just click calculate one more time. You can see the memory overhead is going to be the 16. Uh, GB RAM and the rest all going to be 144. Okay, so if you see here, total available memory is RAM size into number of node, and that should be get minus with total memory overhead. So if you if you could see the RAM size, what I'm giving here is 32 GB RAM for each node. So that means 5 into 32 is my overall, and in that I'm just giving 16 GB to my memory overhead, and then number of executors so executor is the one which is going to run the task your task in each node so executor is cores per node divided by cores per executor i'm just rounding that value and uh, there is one more calculation you can do for uh, number of executors so this is the one so total number of executor divided by total number of nodes so it could be anything you can use either this one or you can use this one and then memory per executor is total available memory divided by number of executor into number of nodes. And then number of, okay, yeah, this we have seen, right? So driver memory. So driver memory is again that RAM size into 0 0.2 you have to give to driver memory. So driver memory uh, performs certain tasks like execution, creating the executing execution plan and then gathering data and many more. So that you have to give this much value to driver memory. Parallelism. So parallelism, when I talk parallelism, like it's not within the node, it is across the node by the executor should run in parallel. So for that, we give number of executor into cores per node. By default, it is 200 actually. 200 parallelism is what by default, but if you want, you can use this formula. And shuffle parallelism is once your map computation is completed, the parallelism is completed, next the data will be get shuffled because it has to go to different node for the next uh, transformation. The shuffle transformation like reduce by should happen, right? So for that, we have to give shuffle transformation like shuffle parallelism is required. By default, if you didn't give this, it will take the parallelism value. So if you want to mention it, then it is going to be parallelism into 1.5. So these are some optimal values. So if since you are creating this application, you can change this value. You can change this value. All right. Now, just I'm just returning all these to my result.html. So, these are all the variable names which I use here. See, total number of cores, total memory overhead, total memory overhead equal to total memory overhead. And I'm just passing this to my result.html. You can see I'm just passing this variable. I'm creating the label. So, this page, when I click calculate, whatever you see here is the output of result.html. Okay. So, this is what about the calculator. So, Thanks for watching. If you really like this video, please do subscribe my channel and forward this to your friends and colleagues. And we do a lot of data engineering and big data programming language SQL videos. Stay tuned. And then my Instagram page is the data tech. You can follow me there as well. Thanks for watching.